Okay, we're going to read chapter three today of Alvin Ho. Roast Duck in the Window. After a while, I just had to bother Calvin again. He had stopped reading the encyclopedia online and was now sitting on the floor and holding a permanent marker in his hand. What you doing? I asked. I'm writing my name on everything I own, said Calvin. That way, you'll have to ask for permission before you touch my stuff. He wrote, Calvin Ho, on the bottom of his sneakers. Then he wrote, C. Ho, in glistening black marker on the bottom of his baseball glove. Calvin Ho went inside his batting helmet. Finally, he began writing Calvin Ho inside his favorite books, which were also my favorite books. It looked like I had better get started before everything belonged to Calvin. So I grabbed another marker and wrote Alvin Ho on my baseball. It was not my play ball, but my special ball, kept in a clear plastic box on the shelf. Someone else had already written his name on it, Daisuke Matsuzaka, whose nickname is Dice K. I can roll as fast as Dice too, especially when I am Firecracker Man, so my name sure looked fantastic right next to his. Now that ball's good for nothing but playing, said Calvin. It was great news to me. I had always wanted to throw it. But even better, Calvin seemed like he was now in a talking mood. So I gave him the bad news. Calvin's rules for making friends isn't going to work for me, I said. I can't do anything on the list on account of I can't even say hello. Got any other ideas? Hmm, said Calvin, his marker in midair. Are the other boys in your class bigger than you? Mostly, I said, but Pinky is bigger than everyone. Sometimes it helps if a friend is the same size as you, said Calvin. Then you don't have to say anything. How come, I asked. Don't know, said Calvin. That's just the way it works. Then Calvin went over to the computer, typed and clicked. Stretching exercises for accelerated growth flashed across the screen. See results in five minutes. Amazing results fast. There were all sorts of diagrams and instructions on how to grow a few inches. It was perfect. He printed a few pages and we hurried outside to the backyard with them. Summer wasn't quite over, but fall was already showing off with pretty leaves. Butter, cinnamon, orange, and burnt toast colored. The leaves looked like fireworks exploding in the golden afternoon light. And Annabelle was singing under them. La 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 la. Annabelle sang. La 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 la. Annabelle was digging holes, one of our favorite things to do. Her holes were not as good as mine. They weren't even real holes, just dimples, but she sure loved digging them. La 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 la. She sang like a little bird. The garden hose was in one hand, and one of my carved sticks was in the other. I ran over. I nearly almost gave her a thumping, but I didn't. I remembered just in the nick of time that I am a gentleman. My dad taught me and Calvin the rules of being gentlemen. Rule number one, no hitting, especially girls, unfortunately. If I remember only one rule, it should be this, my dad said. And if I forget it, I will not be a man, but a mushroom. Being a man would be a lot easier if Annabelle didn't mess with my things eat my food, drink my chocolate milk, or get in my way. Annabelle, I said breathless, that stick's been carved and it's not for digging. It's only for robbery and mayhem. Yep, said Annabelle. She stopped. She looked at the stick. My dad had shown me how to use a knife to take off the bark so that it would be smooth. I had, I had a rare collection of these sticks against the back fence. And it's good for digging, Annabelle said. Try it. So I did, and so did Calvin. He digs better than anybody. He is a regular backhoe. Someday, he could become the world's best hole digger. Dirt flew. Water gushed. It was great. When our yard had more holes than the prairie dog exhibit at the zoo, we stopped. Annabelle, you're right, Calvin declared. These sticks are good for digging. They're smooth in the hand, not rough. Annabelle beamed. Calvin always has a good word for her. Now Alvin and I have work to do, said Calvin. Work? Annabelle looked puzzled. 
Calvin made a stirrup with his hands, and I stuck my foot into it, and he pushed me up into our apple tree. I grabbed a branch and hung from it. What kind of work is that? asked Annabelle. It's a stretching exercise, said Calvin, to make him taller. Being bigger will help him make friends in school. Oh, said Annabelle. She tilted like a teapot to look at me. You look like a duck hanging in a Chinatown window. Come on, let's help him, said Calvin. He reached up and pulled on one foot, and Annabelle copied, pulling on the other. See results in five minutes, said Calvin. Amazing results, fast. It hurt my armpits just a little, not too much. I could feel myself stretching like a rubber chicken. Suddenly, Annabelle let go. Let's bake cookies with Mom, she shrieked and began running toward the house. Great idea, said Calvin, taking off after Annabelle. Hey, wait, I cried. I want to bake too. Annabelle looked back but didn't stop. She was getting better at doing two things at once, like giving orders and running. You keep stretching, Alvin, she said as she ran. We'll bring you some cookies when they come piping hot out of the oven, okay? That way you'll be half grown by the time we get back. Great idea, I squeaked. Annabelle isn't in school yet, but she says things that sound as though she's already been through the sixth grade or something. But it wasn't such a great idea for long. I could feel my grip slipping. I couldn't hang on forever. I couldn't even hang on much longer. But I couldn't jump either. I am afraid of heights. I could break some bones if I fell. So I swung my legs up and draped my knees over the branch like on the monkey bars at school. It was a close call. But this was not the monkey bars. I was now upside down and even farther from the ground. And I was stuck. Calvin, I yelled, help me down. There was no answer for a long time. Then the scent of cookies wafted from the house. Hey, I screamed. I heard milk glasses clinking, followed by the muffled voices of a TV cooking show. Then the sound of Annabelle singing. La, 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 la. Annabelle, I screamed, help. La, 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 sang Annabelle. Mom, I squawked. My breath puffed out in clouds. My face froze. Ah! My nose ran. My ears rang. My head spun. Then I had an itch I couldn't reach. But that wasn't the worst of it. It was getting dark. The wind moved and the leaves applauded. The garden hose hissed and slithered. The grass disappeared. And in its place roared a black, black sea. Ah! I screamed. Somewhere a piano played. Video games blasted, and Annabelle sang. La, 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 I wanted to cry, so I did. I squeezed the branch with my knees and cried full blast. Crying is really great, even upside down. Everything is always better afterward. And it was. Soon I heard Louise coughing up the, the driveway. Louise is my dad's wasabi green car, which he loves more than fireworks. My dad was home. My dad is da dad, which means he's the best. He would save me. He always does. Dad, I yelled. Dad, help me. Dad, I'm in the tree. I screamed as loudly as I could. There was only one problem. No sound came out of my mouth. My voice was all in my head. Out there in the cold, in the dark, in the grasp of the evil tree, perched above the hungry sea, I was too scared to speak. And school hadn't even begun. Oh, you poor thing, said my mom, rolling me up in a blanket before carrying me into the house. How did we forget you? It is easy to forget me. I don't make much noise whenever I'm scared out of my wits. And like my dad says, out of sight, out of mind. Which means if you don't see me, you won't think of me either. But finally, when my mom saw my empty place at the dinner table... She thought of me. My mom is the mom. She never had another life, like my dad, who was probably secretly a gung-fu action hero, spy master assassin before he was a dad. She was always a mom. She was practically born that way. But that's okay. She's really super duper. She is not afraid of heights. She can climb a tree in two seconds flat and tear me, poor thing, from the grasp of the evil tree just like that. 
I love it when she calls me that. Poor thing. It was almost worth hanging like a roast duck to hear it. Poor thing.